Can you take me back to the moment that you first met the former pre well back then it was just the Nelson Mandela who was a who 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 had been arrested. Um can you take us back to the first conversation you had with him? We were just trying to understand the man behind the face. Mr. Mandela was talking to me about his admiration for Boer generals who fought against the British in the Anglo-Boer War, General De Wet and General De La Rey. So we were talking about other things. We weren't talking at that first meeting about what we would later negotiate about. It's only after his release in April at the Grote Skier conference yeah. where we started talking about the real issues and there we made a very wise decision which paid off later on and that is let us first explore what do we agree about before we put the emphasis on what do we disagree about did he ever share with you um, the discontentment that some ANC members had at the time with these negotiations taking place? And I want you to also reflect on um, the pushback that you received from some members of the National Party at the time. Well, he regarded it as his own problem, but he did mention it. And I regarded, within my ranks, resistance against what I was doing as my own problem not for him to solve, but for me and my fellow leaders to solve. In my case, it wasn't serious. My cabinet was with me all the time. Before I made the speech of the 2nd of February 1990, which I made, I gave them the whole speech to read. I made them promise not to even tell their wives what I would announce. But they read it and they stood by me. Immediately after I delivered the speech, I went to all the National Party MPs in my National Party caucus in Parliament and said, sorry, I couldn't take you into my confidence in advance. You've now heard the speech. Are you with me? Yes or no? And they unanimously said, yes, we are with you. But yes, within the white electorate, there was a pushback. There was great resistance. There was this far-right party, the Conservative Party, which said, I'm selling out the country, I'm a traitor. And still I think about one-third of the white population described me as somebody who sold out. Who, they wanted to cling to apartheid. We abolished apartheid. So yes, it was one of the biggest challenges I faced. And I have later come to understand that it has also been one of Mr. Mandela's biggest challenges. He was always very careful to say, before I can say yes to this, I've heard you, I must go back to my constituency. And sometimes we lost some time because of that. It took, it took extra time for him to get unanimity and support for certain concessions he had to make. So for us as the two leaders of the two main parties in the negotiations, of course there were, I think, 16 parties yeah. negotiating, it was one of our biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. ZANU-PF, um, the governing party in Zimbabwe, how did the National Party get ZANU-PF to refuse the ANC to set up a camp in Zimbabwe? I was not involved in that, so I can't give you any... You were part of the cabinet. Yes, but the cabinet didn't deal with such, such details. So I was not part of that. That was done behind the scenes, either by the Department of Foreign Affairs or by the military and the police or by a combination of them. Mm -hmm. Was it ever discussed? P.W. Boerta had, had, had a small circle, an inner circle around him. I was never part of that inner circle. And many of the things which happened in the security field happened around the cabinet and not from within the cabinet. There's this issue and a debate that has been happening around um, apartheid debt, for instance. Was it the right decision for South Africa, this is now the democratic South Africa, to pay apartheid debt, the IMF, for instance? I think 
it's the correct thing for any succeeding government to honor the debts of a previous government. There was benefit for everybody from the, the loans made by previous governments before 1994. Those loans were used to develop the economy, to create jobs. But not for black people though. Of course black people also benefit. It's, it's, but the loans were not asked to benefit black people. No, the loans were asked to achieve certain goals. And for minority? No, not specifically for a minority. There's no evidence whatsoever that loans were used only for whites. Mm -hmm. Universities were being built. Infrastructure were being installed from which everybody benefited. I'm not justifying apartheid in any way whatsoever. But what I'm saying is it's a fallacy to say that loans were given just for the benefit of white people. Loans were given to a country for the country's goals. And the country's goals included developing the economy, developing the infrastructure. Uh, ESCOM worked in 1994. There were no blackouts. Everybody who had electricity benefited from it. And now? And now? Everybody suffers because ESCOM is dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting that you mentioned this. Um, earlier on, I was speaking to uh, my producer about this. And this is the question around, and I want you to be as honest as possible on this. Some people make the argument, some say wrongfully so, that life as well as um, public services under the apartheid government was much better than what it is now. You've lived under both. What's your take on this? I think there's an element of truth in it, not because of race or color, but because of bad appointments made in the nine last years in Australia, of cadres instead of people with the right experience, with the right training into management persons. Mm -hmm. People were appointed because of their connections instead of because of their knowledge yeah. and experience. And I think this has harmed service delivery tremendously. Any last message that you'd like to give um, South Africans? Let us work together. Let us accept the challenges which we face. Let us improve the quality of our education. Let us improve the quality of our training, vocational training. Let us get the economy to grow and build investor confidence. And let us work for greater equality. And let us rise above racism and take hands as South Africans together. Our future is bound together, irrespective of whether we're black or white or colored or Indian.